Hello, and welcome to another edition of Car Brief. I'm your host, Richard L. Slager, a licensed attorney in the state of Illinois, and I have dredged up another tale from the legal graveyard of automotive horror to bring to you another sordid tale from the automotive crypts. This case is entitled McKnight versus Classic Auto Body Restoration. This is a case that came out of the United States District Court, Eastern District of Kentucky, and was decided on September 14th of 2017. Let's tear into this case, shall we? This matter was up before the courts on a summary judgment motion that was filed by the defendant, the Classic Auto Body Restoration, Inc. They were looking to get out of this case. They filed this motion, and the root of the dispute is a verbal contract for the restoration of a 1969 Firebird. Keep in mind this was a verbal contract, nothing was put in writing. The parties disagreed about what the terms of the agreement were. Well, that's not surprising because it was all verbal. So it's essentially a word versus word type case. The plaintiff, Mr. McKnight, alleges that in 2013 he met with the defendant shop owner and it was agreed that the vehicle, the 1969 Firebird, could be restored for around $50,000. In 2013 and 2014, the plaintiff, Mr. McKnight, had made payments to the classic auto body shop totaling $85,000, which he argues should at least be sufficient to complete the vehicle. Nevertheless, he indicates that the defendant will not return the car to him, so the defendant is holding his car hostage. And in this case, what the defendant did was they filed a uh, lien, a mechanics lien on the vehicle. And uh, that was allowed in the state of Kentucky. So they're holding the car ransom until they get paid. Uh, they file a countersuit, a counterclaim against the plaintiff. You're allowed to do that in many states, if not all. And they're looking to get money that they claim is still owed to them for the work that they did on his car. They're claiming $32,281.48 for the work that they performed. And it asserts in the counterclaim that the breach of contract for was for that amount. And, of course, they also indicate that they're not going to let this car go until they're paid that amount. So they've got their mechanics lien on it. The vehicle's going to be held until a resolution. And in their motion for summary judgment, they don't ask for a finding that the plaintiff has fi failed to prove his breach of contract claim. What they're trying to do is they're focusing on the damages that the plaintiff is seeking and they're saying that they're not quite right, the damages that he wants. What the plaintiff, Mr. McKnight, wants is he's asking for various remedies. In his lawsuit, he was all over the place. In his complaint, he, uh, or in his response, actually, to the motion for summary judgment, he says he'd like to have $85,000 back plus his car, and maybe he'll pay them something as to the parts and labor that they performed on the vehicle, but he wants his car back and he wants his $85,000 back. Well, you can fairly guess that the court isn't going to go along with that because it's essentially an unjust enrichment on his part. He's going to have a windfall. He'll have his car almost restored, plus the $85,000. That's not reasonable, and the court knows that. In his answers to interrogatories, however, the plaintiff stated that he should get his $85,000 back or get the car and refund the amount he overpaid under the terms of the agreement or get the value of the car as it was supposed to be in when it was completed, which he believes the car to be worth over $150,000 upon completion. For a 69 Firebird, I'm not so sure in this uh, day and age that it would fetch that, but maybe so. Maybe it was some rare one-off with a number of options that none of the other cars had. Who knows? When his deposition was taken, he asked for the remedy that... Uh, he was looking to get his car back to cover and cover his additional costs. So when he was asked what his additional costs were, they turned out to be attorney fees. So he wants his attorney fees as well. Court said, no, they're not going to give him his attorney fees because it's not provided for statutorily in a breach of contract action. And there's no fraud indicated in this case. And there was no actual contract that provided for the assessment of attorney fees if the case went to court. Everything was verbal, nothing in writing. Uh, in his response brief, the plaintiff also asked for a different remedy or another remedy appropriate to the case, 
stating that the measure of damages for the breach of contract was a sum which will put the injured party into the same position he would have been had the contract been performed. Now the court liked that idea because that goes that dovetails nicely with contract law and it seemed to the court to be a suitable remedy in this particular case. However, the question was how much were those damages? Well, in discovery, the defendant indicated that the amount to restore the car would be 18,000 to 20,000. That would finish the car. So another 18,000 to 20,000 would finish the car. And that's assuming that the plaintiff was able to prove that his claim that the classic auto body breached the agreement by failing to restore the Firebird. The cost to finish the restoration is the proper remedy. Uh, it's true that the defendant classic auto body argues the cost of repair is deemed to be a reasonable award only if the cost is less than the difference between the marked value, the market value of the repaired object, and the market value of the object in its current state. Well, the court went on to indicate that uh, the the defendant argued that the required uh, the, the, that this requires the plaintiff to produce evidence of the market value of the restored Firebird, and he hasn't done that. The plaintiff has produced sufficient evidence uh, in the form of the defendant's testimony that it would cost 18000 to 20000 to complete the restoration of the Firebird. So that is not at issue. That is not at issue what it would cost to get this card done. As to any request made by the plaintiff for the $85,000 back and the return of the car, the plaintiff seems to be seeking a rescission of the contract. So a rescission is essentially holding the contract for naught, uh, to repudiate the contract, and put both parties in the position had the contract never been performed. Well, they can't do it in this case because the vehicle has been substantially restored. So you can't go back in time to the condition the vehicle was in prior to entering this agreement. That's just not going to work in this case. So rescission is simply not going to work here. And the courts know it, and I think the parties' attorneys probably also know it. In this action, the parties cannot be restored to their status before the contract was performed. The defendant, Classic Auto Body, has expended labor and expenses in restoring the car. If the court were to order that the contract be rescinded and the plaintiff be refunded the $85,000 and the car, then the plaintiff would receive at no charge the labor and parts that the Classic Auto Body put into the restoration. The court's just not going to allow that to happen. And they, they clearly outlined it in their opinion here. Well, the court uh, indicates that McKnight is not going to get his attorney fees. The court is going to opt for the $18,000 to $20,000 that it would cost to put the vehicle back in restoration, in, into a complete restoration. So the court ordered that Mr. McKnight's going to get his Firebird back, plus he's going to get uh, an award of $18,000 to $20,000 to complete the restoration of his car because that was the initial agreement. The vehicle was going to be restored and it was going to be finished for $50,000. Well, it cost considerably more than that. And the court said, well, give him his car back and we're going to give him eighteen dollars to $20,000 to finish the car. And that was the proper remedy. So the court denied the defendant's motion for summary judgment. There's no genuine issue of a material fact. And it was denied in part, but it was granted to the extent that the plaintiff was not going to be allowed to rescind the contract. It's already been substantially performed. Rescission at this point uh, is not uh, going to be the appropriate remedy. So what, is it, what can we take from this particular case? Well, the bottom line is if you're going to have a vehicle restored, and it's a very costly process involved, just ask me how I know. Things sitting there behind me in that painting, very expensive restoration, cost me a lot. So it... Uh, it's not something I would eagerly seek out to do again, but I am pleased with the results. The thing is, in a restoration, you're going to want to have a definitive writing between the parties. You're going to want to have each phase of the restoration, what exactly is going to be done. Is the car going to be sandblasted, put on a rotisserie, bead blasted, sandblasted, epoxy primer paint put on, 10 or 15 or 20 coats of whatever kind of dream paint that you want on the car all the rust repairs removed, new sheet metal, what exactly is going to be done to the car, and more importantly, in addition, what the cost is going to be for each phase of the restoration. How far and how deep do you want to go into this restoration? Do you want it to turn into a concourse car with every nut and bolt 
done to the nines in perfect condition and the car becomes a trailer queen. Well, that's going to be an extremely costly restoration, but you need to go into it with both eyes open. Both parties do. So the idea here is to get something in writing and you'll have less disappointment and you may be able to avoid litigation unlike uh, these two unwilling participants encountered in this case. Well, that pretty much sums it up. And now the air is cleared, the rain has stopped, and the clouds are gone. The case is over and the sun shines once more until the next legal storm clouds form in another case of automotive terror brought to you by the courts. I'm Richard Elslager, your host of Car Brief, and I bid you happy motoring and drive defensively. Until next time, when I open up the vault and tear out another case of automotive terror, I bid you well. Take care.